Hey there, welcome to day 1170. Sharon Hornell from here with Supersize Your Business, Pajama Grandma, uh, Get Up and Go Challenge. Not sure how you found me or how you're seeing this particular video or listening to this particular version of my podcast. But I want to talk today about something that I looked into a little bit today that I've thought about a lot over the last two years for sure. And that's the topic, It's Complicated. Have you ever said it's complicated. When somebody asks you a question about your business, your relationship, your life, have you ever said, well, it's complicated, meaning I don't want to explain it. It's a lot more than I want to go into. There's a lot of details. There's a lot of moving parts. I don't want to talk about it. And I have been guilty of that with respect to my relationships, my divorce, with respect to my health, with respect to my businesses. I could take and make making and manufacturing Italian food the most complicated business in the whole wide world. It was rocket scientists or brain surgery as far as I was concerned in terms of safety and cleanliness and sanitation and how it had to be to ensure people's safety and to ensure that we were doing the right thing all the time. And I made it super complicated and sometimes downright annoying and miserable because we had to do so many detail oriented things that I believed we had to do in order to run the business well. Some things we did a whole lot of them we actually didn't need to do. We were one of those businesses that did way more than any of the regulatory agencies required of us. We were a, a daily USDA inspected facility, so every day the USDA inspectors were there looking at our processes, looking at our procedures, overseeing our operations, etc. And so when you have that kind of oversight, you know, big brother watching, you tend to be a, not paranoid, but we just wanted to make sure we never had a violation, and we never did, because we made sure that everything we were always doing was above and beyond what was required by the government, by other agencies, by other businesses, so that we would never have a challenge or a problem. And that made things kind of complicated sometimes. Uh, do you, have you ever been guilty of complicating things? Our idiom, our expression for Supersize Your Business today was, it's not rocket science. And it was a fun one for me to look into because in the past, and I still tend to do it sometimes, obviously we're on day 1170 of me documenting my journey as I go from the offline to the online world, I tend to complicate things. A lot of people would probably have said, hey, in five episodes, here, here's what I'm doing or what I did and be done with it. But me, no, I'm going to share every day what's going on as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business. Uh, but it's not rocket science, right? Any industry, any business, any relationship, anything can be boiled down to its real components of what's going on, what is important and urgent and necessary, not uh, all the other stuff we throw into it. And one of the interesting things I discovered as I was researching this particular expression or idiom is that uh, there's something called complexity bias. And we as human beings have a complexity bias. Each and every one of us, just like we have different personalities and different likes and dislikes, we have a comfort level with complexity. Some of us are nerdy, engineered, detail-oriented types, and we like a lot of details and a lot of complexity and a lot of steps, you know? And then there's other people that are like, hey, keep it simple. I want to know just the nuts and bolts. Let's get through this. Let's do the, the main things we have to do, but forget all the extra stuff that we don't need to do. I guess it's the difference between being a perfectionism and being somebody that does what they can with what they've got right now. And we all fall on a spectrum of that from like, you know, super duper perfectionism to, hey, do the minimum to get by. Uh, and so it's not that complicated or it's complicated. And I think I tend to be toward the keep it complex, although I'm striving and actually working toward keeping things simple. I've begun to adopt frameworks. I've used frameworks my entire life, but I've begun to adopt and create my own frameworks. The SOAP framework and the Get Up and Go Challenge is an example of that. 2020 was a year of simplification for me and probably for millions and millions, if not hundreds of millions of other people. A lot of the activities and things that we used to run through our life doing with our families and with for ourselves were put to a halt with COVID-19. And we've stopped doing all those complicated things. Now, there's challenges with that. If there's challenges in your relationship, if there's challenges raising your kids, if there are challenges in your workplace, if there are challenges in running your business, all of those things, when we slow down and simplify, 
are magnified, magnified, and come to light. And then they have to be addressed. We can't ignore them anymore. But one of the things I thought was interesting was I found 21 ways that we as humans complicate our lives. And I thought it was a great list. It would be a good checklist to go through on some frequency, like maybe once a month or once every six months and say, you know, where am I at with these things? Have I done these 21 things? And if I had, are there some I could let go of and I could say, oh yeah, I don't need my life to be that complicated. So I'm going to share this list and I think I'm going to actually type this list up and make it as a little checklist and worksheet to use as a tool on some basis. It's not my list of 21 things. I found it online. I'm not even sure who, I just Googled it. So I don't, I didn't write down who the reference was, but I thought it was a pretty good list. So let's see, what are the 21 ways that we complicate our lives? We procrastinate. Anybody procrastinate here? We worry. I worried this weekend about my son for no reason, but I hadn't heard from him on Saturday. Uh, we wait. We wait for the time to be right. We wait for the stars to align. We wait for all kinds of things. We wait for people when they're late to meet us. We do more than we should. Anybody else ever say yes to too many things and take on too many things and do more than we should? I think my whole 30s and 40s were just decades of doing way more than was humanly possible, meaning I I said yes to everything, and that meant I had to say no to things like taking care of myself, eating right, exercising, things like that that caused me major problems later on. We accept too many interruptions. We seek approval or affirmation from others. We expect other people to tell us what to do or to, to affirm what we are doing. We're not really productive. Sometimes we think we're being productive, but we're not. Uh, we aim for control. We hold on to birds that need to fly, meaning we hold on to project people, things, places longer than we should and long after we know we should have let them go or we should have moved on to different things. We participate in drama. We take one step forward and two steps back. Well, that's kind of human nature, right? We're always going to have things that work out for us and things that don't. Uh, we complain. We don't set boundaries. We compare ourselves to others. We aren't honest. We... And, and that might be we're just not honest with ourselves about what's important to us. We don't forgive. We focus on ourselves instead of on others. We don't nurture our relationships, including our relationship with ourselves. We live in the past. We try to cheat or avoid the tough stuff. Those are a list of 21 ways that we overcomplicate our lives. Are you, like me, guilty of any or all of those things? i got to believe that during my lifetime, my 61 years here on the planet, I've done all those things to some greater or lesser extent. Every single one of them. Procrastination, just the one, the reason that, that one struck out to me and was first on the list is I used to be, and I still am, a procrastinator. As much as I battle it and, and try to avoid it, it is inherent in my nature to procrastinate, to overanalyze, to overthink things. And I have to actually put systems and things in place and habits in place to make me not do that, to make me make quick decisions, to make me choose among options rapidly, to when I'm faced with a challenge, focus on the solution and move into solution immediately. Things like that so that I don't make things too complex, overcomplicate them. And in the Good Up and Go Challenge, I share a simple tool every single day to illustrate the SOAP framework, how we can use that and install it in our subconscious so we do automatically make better decisions, quicker decisions, faster decisions to move us in the direction we want to go versus being stuck and making things more complex than they have to be. Our 365 day challenge to do one thing every day that centers us from the little journal book I found up at the cabin was about kindness and passing it on. Yesterday was about receiving a kindness. Today is about a kindness that we pass on to someone else. So I challenge you and everyone else on the planet to go out and do one kindness, just one kindness, not a ton, just do one kindness for someone else on the planet, right? You can do a kindness for yourself if you're not going to have, if you can't come up with any way possible, humanly possible, to pass a kindness on to someone else. Hint, hint, you could just send them a message or send them an emoji or comment on their post or tell them to have a nice day or smile at them or call them or go for a walk and smile at people, whatever. There's a lot of ways to be kind. There are infinite ways to be kind to other people and to be kind to ourselves. So that's what I'm working on. I'm actually reading a book by one of my mentors, one of my coaches this year, and I am doing a chapter a day because I've got so many other things to do. I'm committing to doing a chapter a day, and today is about uh, creating our dream team and 
and and what we do and how we do that. Now, I've worked with lots of teams. I've been a team leader, a team manager for decades now. So I know how to build teams. I know how to lead teams. I know about a lot about teams, but I am not currently working with my dream team. And I can make up excuses and I can say why, but I'm just not. I'm, I'm working with some people, but they're not all dream team members, right? Depending on where you are in your business and in your life, you need different people around you. And as you grow and change, your team members often have to grow and change as well. One of the toughest things in life is when we're building a business or we're building something and people help us for part of the time, but then they reach their, we all have a level of incompetence. We all, and we can grow and learn and, and increase our competence, or we can decide to stop and stall out and stay there. A lot of specialists, engineers like me, we, we get educated, we learn how to do a specific engineering type tasks, and then we max out in our careers because that's where we want to stay, that's where we're the most comfortable, is just doing the same engineering projects and tasks and things that we're used to doing. And other people want to grow and expand and continue to grow and expand. So there's team members that grow with us and team members that we find a spot for in our organization where they can perform and be awesome at what it is that they do, but we don't expect them to do other things. And then there's other team members that we outgrow as we expand and grow and, and become different in our business. And that's, we want to make sure that we find them a good place as well. We don't just want to abandon them and leave them behind. My, my mentor and coach would say, just cut them loose. And I'm like, okay, yeah. But I have got a personal belief that everyone who ever leaves my organization, any organization I've ever worked in, with the exception of the few people I had to fire because of dishonesty and theft and, and corruption, uh, I want to make sure that they've got a, they're going on to a better thing for them, a better place for them than being a part of our organization, whatever that organization might be. All right, that's it. That's what I'm working on today. Go out, make it an absolutely amazing day. If I can help you anyway, ask in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow to let you know what I'm doing as I transition from the brick and mortar world to the online world. Have an awesome day.